Our approach has been uh, to generally go in for innovations, new ideas, new practices, new benchmarks as the road to improve the livelihoods of people. Swar is a system of water for agricultural rejuvenation. The Swar is a combination of ancient Indian wisdom, uh, wherein pots were used. Pots have a unique sweating properties, slowly oozing out water. So that was there in India about 200, 300 years ago. And many of the, uh, uh, of the plantations that came up, which are called sacred groves, where specific types of trees were planted and even worshipped, especially Ayurvedic or medicinal plants, uh, that was developed in that way. Now, we looked at that idea and then we developed the mud pot in a way that it has the ideal sweating properties in different underground conditions. And then we also combined it with modern materials and sciences. Uh, the ambition of Swar is twofold. On one side, we would like to regenerate our forests in a manner that it is biodiverse, it has local species, it has large canopy, it has a lot of leaf dropping, which is what the tropical forests have been. So that's the, that's the idea so that you can harness both livelihoods as well as ecological gains from such a, such a forest. We have the land for it. We now, Swar is a technology to do that. So Swar is a, a system of triggering water at the root of a plant which no other technology does and spread it around in a manner that the roots grow actively and aggressively and, and once we are able to do that with trees, we hope that it will have a cascading impact on changing the ecological benefits and the livelihood benefits that people from this area would have. These are areas with large amount of land available but very little water available. So Swar is the highest efficiency in terms of water. There's no comparable model because all of them drip on the surface, whereas we take the water directly down. So we are talking of a much, much and drastically reduced requirement of water. And Swar works in all kinds of trees and species. There are no weed growth. Unlike in drip systems where you have a lot of weed growth, there's no weed growth at all here. Right? Yeah. So, uh, and this is a, an automated system. It gives you all the benefits of of, of a drip irrigation system without electricity. It is not possible to provide electricity to regenerate forests or in farmlands that are held by the poor people because it's, it's just not possible. That's not, it's not available in countries like India. But as far as water is concerned, and water in our case is used not as water, but as moisture, uh, we are the best uh, uh, in, in that system. And we are changing the game. So if out of your 365 days, your one day of water is enough for me for one tree. So if you did not take water for one year, I can tell you 365 trees can come up. That's the numbers. In Swar, there is no labor work at all. You have to only do two things. You have to see that the overhead tank is filled up with water and then you'll have to open the pipes. And you'll have to check that water is flowing through the system. And you, you, you do it once in a month, that's good enough. Because there's no weed, there's nothing, no dependence on electricity, the rest of the system works. Having said that, uh, while this is providing moisture, it is equally important for the farmer to spend some time to provide the nutrients that are required for the plant. Because each of them will vary according to the species of the soil. that India, like in anywhere else, the largest workforce is women in agriculture. But women do not use tools. It's only men who use tools, right? And if it is a machinery like a tractor, I don't think anywhere you'll find women driving tractors. It's only men driving tractors. If you have a combined harvest, it'll be driven by men. 
Okay, so our idea was that we should reduce the drudgery of women. We should reduce the uh, operational injuries that they have, right? And the third idea was that we must increase their productivity because that is the only way they're going to gain respect in, in the markets. Swar, for example, is a system where the women just don't have to bother much. They just have to open the tap and they have to see how the water is going, etc. So that it's very women friendly in that sense of the word. We developed two other tools. One is a, a crowbar uh, and the other is a scythe, right? Scythe is, was developed because women do cutting and cutting requires cutting of weeds, which they hold by hand and it, it leads to a lot of inf it, problems for them, right? Skin diseases, rashes, etc. Whether in the sky and you have to sit down, here you don't. You just stand up and you sort of keep on cleaning it. It also increases the productivity by four to five times. We did that with a crowbar, which is used for digging. And there we found that in the crowbar, uh, women, uh, when they were digging, the bottom would get blunt and the tip, because it gets blunt, you require even more and more effort. If you were to sharpen it, no local sharpeners are available because there are no ironsmiths in the village any longer. You have to take it to town. So they avoid doing that. So do work hard and hard with a blunted tool. So what we did is we combined at the bottom of the six inches a high particular metal which, which does not have any of these problems. We clad the two of them. So therefore you have a crowbar. And it was also ergonomically designed in such a way that the impact and the thrust are maximized. So if the thrust is what the women are providing, the impact will be much, much larger than what you were getting earlier. So these are little tools that we have developed to help uh, women improve their productivity and their status and reduce their drudgery. I must say we have not really scaled up because we were still trying to perfect the technology. And I think it is only now that we are going to, to scale it up, not only in India and hopefully in other similar areas such as in Africa.